Today we're going to look at the different schools of art that you will find when uh, studying art itself. <clears throat> now these different schools are uh, different ways in which art has been presented particularly in um, painting or the use of color and canvas. Uh, so let's look at each individual school of art as we go along. First of all, abstract art, and if we're going to define abstract art, abstract art is a style of art that does not attempt to represent an accurate depiction of visual reality. Instead, it uses shapes, colors, forms, and gestural marks to achieve its effect. So the main characteristic of this is it's non-representational. There's use of forms and color, but it's not like we're painting here a picture of a beautiful valley. That would be more naturalism or realism, and we'll look at those later. But this is abstract. We're not picking anything up. There's no particular pattern, but all these forms and shapes come together to achieve something that is quite stirring at times. Uh, this is a painting to your right um, by Wassily Kandinsky, okay? I am probably going to butcher most of these names, so um, please forgive me if I do so. So the next school of art we are going to look at is Impressionism. Impressionism is an art movement that emphasized the expression of the inner emotional experience rather than realistic portrayal. It often uses bold colors and distorted forms to convey intense feeling. Uh, so this is what's going on. They're going to uh, convey intense feeling through these and so the characteristics of this is, is emotionally charged and distorted forms and this is an example to your right of uh, Evard Munch's painting The Scream um, so you can see distorted form emotional expression it's emotionally charged i mean you look at it and you get an emotional feeling and an emotional feeling is being expressed in this case a scream then you have a baroque style so if we're going to define it uh, Baroque art is characterized by its ornate dramatic style. Uh, it often features dynamic compositions, grandeur, and a focus on religious themes. Of course, it's ornate, it's dramatic, and then religious themes also characterize these paintings and this style. Um, and this is a painting to your left by Caravaggio. And this is not, this is one of his lesser knowns, um, but there are multiple, multiple paintings that he has. And uh, this style focusing on you know, the dramatic, you know, at this point, you see in the painting, this is a card game going on. And now this individual has to show his cards. The other one has already shown theirs. And you also have a character kind of behind looking to see what, um, 
this individual has in their hand. But notice the lighting. Um, notice uh, even in that time how well, how um, how well just the facial expression and the flesh uh, is is captured in particularly Carvaggio's paintings. We have classicism. If we want to define it, it's defined as an art movement that draws inspiration from ancient Greek and Roman art. It places an emphasis on order, symmetry, and a return to classical forms and themes. Um, of course, the emphasis on order, symmetry, and uh, ancient Greek and Roman influences. So when you see the painting uh, by Jacques Louis David uh, about a man taking an oath, uh, you see how well he captured the human form, but it's definitely Roman in its... Um, Uh, in its influence, you could you could tell uh, this looks like um, you know, Roman soldiers in this painting, and so this is a form of classicism. You have cubism, and cubism is a style of art that breaks down objects and figures into geometric shapes and mul multiple perspectives, often resembling fragmented forms. So geometric form and multiple, multiple perspectives. And this is a painting by Pablo Picasso, probably one of his lesser known paintings. A lot dealt with even the human form, even though it's um, uh, it's you know you you can tell it's human form, but you know it's not like a a realistic portrayal. It's it's non-realistic, and with Picasso, uh, of course. Um, it is abstract, but not, you know, we, we think of Picasso and think, well, he's an abstract artist. Well, it's abstract in that it doesn't represent fully the form of the person, but it's less abstract than it is cubism. And we have uh, Fossism or Favism. Uh, it's known as for its bold and vivid use of color. Uh, it uses non-realistic color choices to create an emotional impact. Um, and so bold color, non-realistic color choices. Uh, and this is a uh, picture to the right um, by Henry um, Madisy. So notice it's a picture of a woman sitting like on a chaise lounge, uh, but the use of color is extremely vibrant, um, non-realistic or non-natural. Uh, it's it's emphasized to the hilt, kind of. Um, so the use of color is huge in this particular painting style. Then you have geometric abstraction. And if we're going to define this as the style of 
abstract art that uses geometric shapes and precise lines to create compositions. It often conveys a sense of order and balance, the use of geometric shapes and precision and the picture in the background is a picture by Pied Mondrain and it's one of his more famous probably probably the most famous paintings of this style then you have impressionism this is probably what we're most familiar with um, kind of a more naturalistic form an approach is characterized by capture capturing the effects of light and atmosphere in everyday scene scenes uh, often with loose brushwork um, and so the capturing of light and momentary effects with loose brushwork this is in the background a painting by Claude Monet and so it's a a Monet painting done in an Impressionism form. Then we have Minimalism, and Minimalism is an art movement that simplifies forms to their essential elements, often focusing on material and shape. So simplified forms uh, emphasize uh, the use of material. Um, often you hear, even in the context of today's world, the use of minimalism or being minimalist. Uh, basically, it means just to the basics of what one, what one would need and so this art form does that itself and this is um, a sculptural representation of a minimalist form done by Donald Judd and so notice it's not canvas and uh, paints here we're looking at art that is more of a structural nature. And then we have a uh, naturalism style, and it is a style of art that seeks to depict reality as it is, often uh, with meticulous attention to detail. So accurate depictions of everyday life is a characteristic of naturalism and this is a painting to your right uh, by Gustav Courbet and uh, notice he's focusing on um, everyday events this seems like two men walking one way another walking the other walking along a pathway and they meet one another and uh, there's a dog in the background and a scene in the background past the animal and it's just focusing on capturing everyday life I mean think about of course uh, there were no Polaroids um, <laughs> there were no you know digital images in the days in which these paintings were created so this was a way of capturing uh, just scenes from everyday life uh, in, in vivid detail uh, and some were particularly good at this form and Gustav was Then you have op art. Op art is short for 
optical art. It creates optical illusions through the use of geographic patterns and precise arrangements. And this is a painting to your left um, by Bridget Riley. Uh, of course, the use of optical illusion, geometric patterns, And then different colorations here. Uh, this is one of uh, one of my favorite forms of art personally. Uh, I have a, a wood pattern that has been done with different colors and geometric shapes. So this is one of my favorite ones. And this is photorealism and photorealism is uh, a style of art that aims to create paintings that closely resemble high resolution photos and these are highly detailed in their presentation and so it's highly detailed paintings resembling photographs. And uh, this is to your right, uh, Chuck Close. And he is sitting in front of a um, photo or a painting of him with different geometric shapes. Uh, Chuck Close passed away not too long ago. So he's a very uh, modern art uh, individual. Often we think of modern art, we think of Warhol. Well, Warhol hasn't been around for multiple decades now, but um, Chuck Close passed away about two years ago. Uh, but he was known primarily for photorealism. And you have pointillism. Pointillism is a technique where small, distinct dots of color are applied to the canvas, which when viewed from a distance, blend to create a huge image. Um, so sometimes you see this depicted, I know, uh, oddly enough, um, places like Olin Mills would, um, uh, they would take maybe a group of people and um, maybe if those people were connected to a particular place, they would take photos of those people. And when you get up to the actual canvas, you could see the individual photos, very small. But when you pull back, it was actually the building they were associated with or the place maybe it's a school maybe it's a church um, but this is pointillism uh, the use of small distinct dots of color and when you view it from a distance um, you you see a larger picture um, and this is a representation of, I believe it's called Sunday. Uh, basically, uh, afternoon in the park uh, next to the water. And uh, George Surratt. This is a painting of his. And now we come to pop art. Pop art is characterized by the use of popular cultural references, often employed with bright colors and commercial imagery. So popular culture reference, bright colors, and this is probably one of the more well-known artists, particularly today, uh, Andy Warhol. This is two pictures of course one of Marilyn Monroe and then this famous Campbell Soucan 
that Warhol painted. Warhol was one of those individuals. He was probably more famous or at least as famous as the paintings which he created. You know, sometimes I, I, I kind of wonder, you know, why certain things or particular types of art or particular artistic expression was as popular as it was. Sometimes I believe it has to do more with the personality of the individual, uh, particularly in the case of Warhol. I mean, these were, these were, you know, good paintings. I don't think they rise to the level of Da Vinci or, or, or anyone of that nature. Um, but it had a lot to do also with Warhol as an individual and the fact that he was part of a particular art scene at that time. But nevertheless, you have these pop art depictions of culture and uh, they became very popular and still are today. Then we have post-impressionism. Post-impressionism is a diverse art movement that followed impressionism. Uh, it emphasizes individual expression using forms and color, color and form to convey emotion. So if characteristics is individual expression, use of color and form and then uh, this are two presentations or representations of the artwork of Vincent van Gogh one being a self-portrait and then another being one of his famous paintings or the most famous painting Realism. Realism aims to depict a uh, objects in a truthful way, an objective manner, uh, focusing on everyday lives of ordinary people. And so uh, you have this emphasis on accurate depictions of everyday lives. This is not Gustave Corbett, uh, but this is uh, Jean Francis Millet. So this is one of Millet's paintings. Um, just notice the emphasis. It looks like uh, you know, three women, farm hands, and they are picking up hay. In a field, and you have in the the distance hay being loaded onto a wagon, being pulled by animals. You have, you know, hay bales stacked. Uh, looks like two or three stories high in the background, but this is a depiction of everyday life in a realism form. We have painting romanticism. Uh, romanticism is characterized by an emphasis on emotion, imagination, and nature, often featuring dramatic, fantastical, and sublime subjects. This is more on the sublime that we're looking here. Emotion, imagination, and nature. And this is Eugene Delacroix uh, that has painted this painting on the left-hand side. Uh, Delacroix has a much more famous painting. I didn't feel comfortable actually adding it to um, this. It is a work of art, and uh, if you would like to look it up, look it up. Um, you've seen it before. You, if you if you've looked at any art, um, but I included this one to give us an understanding of Delacroix's artistic style.
And we have now a, a more modern type of art, and that is street art. Uh, street art is an artistic form or art form that often exists in public spaces characterized by its urban and often temporary nature. And so it's public, it's sometimes often temporary, and it's more urban. Yes, I mean, you can find it in cities. And this is a painting of, a uh, painting done by Banksy, the street artist. Um, the, usually the use of graffiti. Um, I mean, it's graffiti, you know, sometimes it's done in, with spray paint, sometimes it's done with different forms or different materials, but nevertheless, this is an example of street art by Banksy. And then surrealism, surrealism seeks to e express the irrational and unconscious aspects of the human mind. And it often is a juxtaposition of unexpected elements to create a dream, create, create dreamlike compositions. So it's dreamlike, irrational juxtaposition of unexpected elements. And in the background is a painting by Salvador Dali. Uh, okay, I gave you earlier in this class an example of Dolly's painting. Again, he, like Warhol, if you see a picture of Salvador Dolly, it's almost like um, he's he himself is a character. And so, I kind of, you know, why, why did surrealism become, or particularly Salvador Dolly's um, paintings become so popular? Um, and the and the surrealism itself, it probably was a lot to do with the personality of the individual, um, along with the artistic ability. So, in conclusion, uh, the world of art is a vibrant tapestry tapestry woven uh, with diverse schools and movements, each offering a unique perspective on the human experience. From the emotional intensity of expressionism uh, to the precise geometric forms of geometric abstraction and from the dreamlike compositions of surrealism to the bold uh, and vibrant colors of fascism, uh, these artistic movements have shaped the course of art history. They reflect the ever-involving human creativity, imagination, and desire to explore the boundaries of artistic expression by understanding and appreciating the various schools of art. We gain insight into the rich tapestry of human culture and the power of art to transcend time and place. So I hope you enjoy the presentation today. Um, if I'm uh, going to ask any questions from this area. Here are some that I may ask. I'm not going to read out each one of them, but at this point you can pause and look at them uh, to see what question might come up in the future. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.